Who's they? I'm the youth program director of the Intercultural Community Center in Westbrook. In Westbrook. Right. In Westbrook. Okay. Low academic performing students. Oh, so. wow. Is it a hub or is it just for Westbrook? We're recording yeah. right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the Community Service Advisory Board. Um, April 20th. Um, just going to go around the room. Just introduce yourself um, for anyone that's watching um, in case they don't know us. I'm Art Dillon. Ellen Coughlin Quinn, Bruce Brigham, Karen Shoup, Council Liaison, Emily Loader, Alex Marshall, Roger Shabon. Excellent. And of course, Todd Sue. Yep. All right. Emily, you've got attendance. Uh, did everyone get a chance to glance at last month's meeting? Minutes? Take a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you, Trish. Take a second. Second. Thank you, Emily. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Item four, open the meeting to um, citizen comment. Seeing none, we'll close that. Or if the rest of the meeting go that quick. <laughs> All right, we're on to uh, item five, master plan uh, review part eight. Hopefully this will take about 30 minutes. Um, what we thought we'd do was um, break out into two, two groups. And um, compile a list of top priorities that each group comes up with. Um, so if we just go around, Roger, one, Alex, two, one, two, one, two, on a one. And we'll just break up into those groups. Um, let's take about 25 minutes or so. Chapter or Section nine in the master plan has a lot of recommendations. Alex, your comments were great from last meeting um, offline. That were online. Um, <laughs> um, but a lot of those recommendations really do kind of fall towards our internal book, internal goals. Um, so we'll come up with two lists. We've got paper or yeah, there's paper there with a one color marker and paper over oh, here with okay. another color marker. Great. Um, and then we'll convene right after that and uh, kind of compare and start coming up with a list so we can start getting something together for the town council. Great. And the things in your pack, Trish created this and that's in that group, Trish, I don't know if you want to yeah. touch base on that. And I do want to say the books in front of you, Barry Dunn, those came, those weren't part of our package. Barry Dunn printed those complimentary for us. Oh, wow. wow. So I've got uh, one for the town manager, one in the planning department, one at our parks facility, and then we have one here as well. So uh, very generous. Yes. Do we have to give these back? No, those are yours. Okay. I meant those are for you as advisory board members. Are you reading? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, so, ones, why don't we come over here to. So one's going to be facility. so six fifteen right now. If we want to break in mean six forty five. Yeah. And one's going to be facilities. And one's going to be programs. Is that what the? Yeah. Can we put into that instead of ones and twos? Like, um, what like, you want to like pro, like people program people versus facilities people? Because I would have a lot more to contribute to program than I would facilities. I would have a lot more to contribute to facility. <laughs> <laughs> that that works for me. Is that okay? <laughs> yep. Yeah, and if people have thoughts in either spot, like that's fine too. Because sometimes in the facility side of the world, it's the program people that attend programs that have the most insight. Like I'm missing this amenity, or oh, I wish I could roll my stroller to the playground. So so even though you may not have a strong parks or facilities background, how you use it is really important too. So don't feel free to have those type of comments because that may not be a so we're doing programs here and facilities down there. Sure. And facilities includes beaches. Yeah, yeah. facilities would be buildings, beaches, parks. Anything that we utilize yep. yeah, within just the town. And also, really quickly, that yeah. form that I did was just sort of gathering ideas. We were talking 
there seemed to be sort of a dichotomy between what we thought our, our role was to come up with committee goals and what our role was to give to the town council. And some of the goals that we had talked about at the last meeting seemed to dovetail into some of the recommendations that I was hearing, like your comments and everyone else's comments is the master plan. So that was the only reason why I sort of just sort of I felt positive and confident that we were kind of that the two kind of linked fairly well together. Great. Thanks. So facilities here? Yep. And programs here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amanda, do you have a preference of what you listen into? Wherever you're going. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Alex, where are you doing facilities? I just want to balance out. Yeah. Because I don't really care. Where would you like to go? Facilities or program? I would double one. Well, <laughs> if you have a preference for facilities oh, or no, programs. No. All right. I'll go towards facilities. I have no preference. Okay. You're going, Alex, you're going to facilities programs. I'll balance it off because I think we need to balance it off. Yep. Okay. Roger, you get to pick. So I should the next well, you can sit. I mean, I'll I'll, this is the cool yeah, I'll jot down. <laughs> We're going right. to facilities, Amanda. So, Roger, you want to come out and balance? Mm -hmm. All right, so I saw the public. You know, it's happening so quickly. <laughs> I missed you last month. And you missed an important meeting, apparently. <laughs> Wow, this is I like a ball. ball. Yeah. All right. Listen. Right. We didn't really talk about it. Yeah. Goals, but you obviously have a strong feeling. So, do you want to start? Like, think, how you, I think, we what we want to do. What is, we feel. We could do everything, but we can't. We correct. <laughs> so where do we want to, based on sort of their observations and recommendations, where what do we think we want to? I mean, if you first one. the beginning of the program section, what a program I found on page fifty-four, recreation and program analysis. Yeah. So. Options of many different. So they break the different types of programming down into oh, these Asian. sections, which so, are correct, but not all of these no. um, areas well, are being met. So, yeah. so um, right off the bat, you can see four program areas, youth recreation, uh, 54. So like right off the bat under youth recreation, it's, you can see it starts so, at six, if we want to be more which means okay, currently okay, zero okay, through okay, six okay. are not being served in stuff. Um, I mean, which I'm that personally biased towards because I have a one-year-old, so um, I know that that's definitely a hole that we can fill um, or that needs to be filled, yeah, but I think along with the programming I'm comes the development to, of um, a volunteer kind of base blue, that we can have to run some of these programs spaces. if we don't have enough staff I, I to think, do so, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, right. you know, young yeah. kids running the youth programs like we could cross between all of the different types of programming like you know maybe the way that some of the seniors get involved is um you know by leading you know some of those programs and or the kids doing service for the team so there's a lot of different things that can happen with some different types of programs and i think we really need to look at the different niches that we have in the community and work with certain better so if i'm hearing you correctly you're saying one of the top priorities is volunteer recruitment yes yeah Awesome. Temperatures are also different. Yeah, yeah. And I can take notes for this group and then add them to the, the notes as well. I think volunteer recruitment and then creating a programming for your six. Basketball, sports, racquetball, splash track. I was wondering about. Okay, so 17 percent of enrollment is between zero and five. I think that it's very expensive. And I was wondering if we should consider an outside. Okay. Price. That's maybe a great. I wonder what the, uh, I'm sure it's in here. If we had a Okay. Yes. 
So the highest numbers that we have are the six to 12 year 355 pledge, which rightfully so receive the highest amount of programming, yeah. which they should because we have the most people of those ages. But I think it also, because we also have other age groups need to take those into consideration. But in yeah, to do is, that, I mean, they just did an enrollment study that's coming out and the they're projecting that the enrollment in kindergarten is going up over more than 10%. Wow. Um, so I think you're touching a point there. Like, this is a big group of kids that's coming and exists already. Kindergarten starts at five. So yeah. yeah. Are there one of the things we talked about is not um, competing? Just commercial enterprises. Are there programs? Are there commercial entities that are offering programs for zero to five? In Scarborough? Mm -hmm. sort of general area. Not, not really. Not, 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 if there are, you're going to pay out the plug in for them. Yeah. Um, but as far as like a free or a low cost community based program, zero. Yeah. How about the library? They must do story hours. So they do. They do. They do a ten to ten fifteen uh, a.m. once a week. So Really nice. There are like South Portland has one, and, and there are other ones, but not within this. Okay, so that's another thing we talked about was improving communication and connecting. Mm -hmm. So the library has those resources. We don't necessarily need but to duplicate. They, correct, but they don't necessarily have the time or the space. The reason they do that is because the one big room that they have is the time that there is allotted for that program. The other times um, that could be there, other programs are running. Okay. So that's why. So, so they come down to space again. Right? Correct. All right. So that's facilities. Okay, from those most of the programs that we have are run by people from working here in Correct. community Correct. services. Correct. Correct. Yes. That take it. Now, they all are. They're yeah, not. Okay. They're not run by volunteers. That, that, that's what I meant. Yes. And, and then if volunteers are an added to the head. Now, do we have an idea? Do we send um, these folks to about if they're teaching? I don't know anything to a course that might be given somewhere that they might say, okay, take the day and see what you can find out. Um, you know, I, I know I worked in the paper. The staff, we, or I'm sorry, who are you talking about? For, for the, the people who want to attend the programs or no, the people the who people are running, running the program. Yeah. Send them if there's an available program somewhere to help them teach. I know we did that in the paper mill. And, and different things. Supervisors could go to say, you know, if you want to go learn how to drive paper better, there's a yeah. thing going on in Orono for what they are listening. Mm. If, if we, and I know it's taken away from from the day to day. Yeah. So professional it's staff training, really. really yeah. what it is. That, that's what I'm, yeah. Ah, okay. So we, okay, professional yeah. development for staff uh, then yeah. Yeah. for a lot of these programs since so they're rec based, it would literally be teaching them all yeah. of those types of different yeah. skills. Yeah. 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 Or helping them teach or bringing things up that have been popular with something yeah, yeah, yeah. that you're getting and bringing in, and uh, we, we all benefit. Great. Yeah. So I don't know if that's limiting. Is there passes or increasing the rates for Mr. Passes? Or making one of the beaches resident, like very beach to be resident. Yeah, there's a awful lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. People don't realize yeah. how it's got, I don't know how they manage. I think, yes. So, right. volunteer recruitment programming for zero to six, um, addressing the lack of space to host programs, and providing professional development for staff to help enable them offer a more wide variety of programming. Yeah. 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 I am so far past the oh, and then early childhood. They, what are you? <laughs> what are you? How optimistic are you in terms of recruiting um, volunteers? You could go. It was so nice. I, I think we could get parents who are interested and motivated in certain subjects. So I think it depends on how you go about doing it, mm -hmm. um, and it needs to be. There needs to be a system yeah, set in place first of how those volunteers are managed, and then once that system is in place. You find someone like me who can be very persuasive, and you say, "This is what we need help with," and then they come in. So, but it's during the day. 
Not always. In the summer, it's from age zero to five, you're going to go out at six or seven o'clock at night. If they can be yeah, if they're in day, if they're, they're in daycare, day like I'm a working mom, I work during the day. So if I want to take my kid out, I'm taking them out between five and seven p.m. Okay. Or all or all day on the weekends. Go back on after. Yeah. Okay. So that's I'm just trying to figure out are the the programs have to be when a parent correct can do it correct correct which is the same totally different issue but like the, for example the library offers movies but they offer them at like one o'clock on a tuesday i as a working yeah. person right. can never go to them right because of that time frame right but people yeah. who are retired or stay at home on the road can go to those things right so if they offer programming they are not serving my yeah, niche of being a working parent to be right. able to go to take my kid um, well, so I think knowing the audience, the audience and what we have and what their availability is, is another way that we can serve them. So if we're looking for volunteers, we can say like, hey, um, can't be in person, but you can volunteer remotely, help us manage our database online, you know, or if you, uh, you know, help us stuff a thousand envelopes asking for money. So we know what we need to ask for and then reach out and know what people's availability is. But it could just be. Do either of you I'm not going to nicely attend any of the senior programs? I don't know if you fall under that age gap or not. <laughs> so uh, don't attend any. Roger, do you attend any no, of them? Yeah, it's right. Well, one of the reasons for that is I've been busy at the beach. <laughs> and, and we have programs going on in Higgins. It's amazing. By the way, you have a yeah. You do. First mm -hmm. angle. Right. 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 We work with Or what kind of clovering? I live in Cloverville, so I'm So I think. Because what is the star that's a, that the, those couple of things that we have here are really large ideas and potential facts, but they are attainable. We develop a plan and then put a system in place to every time. And yeah, well, I mean, we, we the budget goes for you know maintaining this, maintaining that. But I don't see too much of the business. Maybe I'm wrong. Right about. And you know, so educating like, our own people there are really long to maybe things have, that they right? would yeah, learn yeah, at a conference something. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's money well spent. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I hundred percent. I hundred percent agree. Uh, well, my example of that is that when we, when I was living in the Wilton Farmington area, from our blue, I was yeah, I to be on We only had one sports. And and they were buying. Jackets for winning teams. And the wrestling team has won the state championship. Next number was yes. How many jackets? Yeah. And I thought we ought to get tickets and all that. Stopping it or buying everybody coming there as a person. Well, I know. And and use it to. Send people if they want to go to a hard camp, or, and, and especially teachers that have a hard time going because they can't afford it. Yeah. Send them to like a football coach, back child coach. Yeah, yeah. Go to those things in the summertime. Yeah, 100%. Then, I 100%, I 100 agree. Yeah. Um, like I had just come from the conference and took my staff to one. Um, speaking from personal experience with the budget, I would say that probably a huge chunk of it goes for staff salary and maintenance on facilities and the availability, the, ta the tasks to the number of staff outweigh them too much, which allows them less time for professional development, which is where that creation of the volunteer base would come in. So if we have volunteers that are running some of the programs, our staff can get educated in, in some other ways that can show they can help. So if you go to page 61, where it discusses gaps, one of the things that we're talking where we've missed is the aquatic water and water safety program. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering outdoor and nature programs. I'm wondering if this is we, this volunteer reporting is important. Although I have been with working with volunteers for ever, and I have a fear of relying on a volunteer for a program. 
Um, but that's why you have a system in place so that you know, worked with systems before. It's still hard to get volunteers to show up. I agree. I, I, I agree. And everyone is so busy right now. Like, look at Tom had to leave this committee. Yeah. That's a little bit of like, I mean, I'm not saying you absolutely have to try it. Yeah. I'm wondering if this is too specific in terms of, this is where I go back and forth. Is this, we're saying we want programming for ages zero to five. The gaps that were identified in the community surveys were aquatic and water safety, outdoor and nature programs, adult sports, fitness and wellness programs. But these are, those are across the board. That's like, water program for everybody. Agreed. That's not, not but that's what I'm saying. Should that be one of our goals? Because, like, I went through today, the whole checklist. I mean, eventually, so when we have some place to, for people to swim, but we can't we'll give them an aquatic we'll program until we have that facility system. that exists. But if we're prioritizing, correct, correct. Um, is that a top priority? <laughs> because that would swimming lessons for age eight to zero to five, that could be a program that you could put in the pool. I, I guess, I don't, yeah, I agree with you, but I don't think it's a priority until we have the facility. Because like right now, other towns that have those facilities get infiltrated by people like us who don't have them. Right. I, I literally take some lessons right now in South Portland because right. we don't have one. Right. But I think, when we get to the point that the facility exists where we can offer those programming, then we can revisit it and say, if this is the gap of age group that we want to serve, then we can prioritize putting that age group in the pool for more time than anybody else. But will is our role to advocate for that facility? Yeah, it's a priority. That's what I'm wondering. That's where I kind of go back and forth. Like, is is our role? I mean, I guess this is a subset. I think not maybe in this particular activity. Whereas when we revisit the master plan review in the next part, I think maybe um, yeah, that one more. And that, that's probably kind I of the feel process. Like the the program, you're probably going to say, like, like, I feel like the recommendation that's going to come from the right. right. You know, maybe, yeah. yeah. And so I think those are both, I think. Yeah. And, and, and this is where the we all know you support it. And it's in an and on top of that, while we get that, then, we, then we here's the other stuff that we can contribute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, why can we with the nature programs, I really think there's other opportunities to work with other people, like the Scarborough Land Trust. We've been doing stuff. Yeah. I've been yeah. really involved with them. Library. I think there's and definitely also the programming yeah, people, the people who professionally would be able to work with. Yeah, yeah. and and I think so. That's so how we say it is like for. So the volunteers don't necessarily have to run the program, they can be the support. So like we can pair with dozens of local organizations like just that you work with Audubon and, and a couple of other ones, they can run the program, you know, and then you bring in the adults, you know, and have, or have the provide the facility and then bring in other adult volunteers. So that goes back to sort of collaboration again. Yeah. I cut them off. So it's the only way I, think I, mean, I know that's what I'm saying. So volunteer recruitment and, and identification of partners for well, I know story hours, outdoor nature programs. I know one that you can do with the folders on. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there, if you don't know anything about folders, go over there and, 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 and walk with the uh, Audubon people. My wife's there all the time. Right. But you but think they, but there's, there's interest there with kids. Yeah. So here's what I'm talking about. What about taking community yeah, partners yeah, who yeah, are based outside of Scarborough but bringing them into Scarborough to utilize the space in the kids here as well? Like we work with um Main Coast Heritage Trust, but not Scarborough, but Main Coast, you know, and they're based in somewhere that is not Westbrook. Yeah. You know, and they come in and do and programming with us. Or well, it doesn't have to be so it can be beyond the community. Yeah. So it's volunteer yeah. recruitment and identification of partners in Scarborough and beyond. So and an example yeah. would be the Audubon. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those birds and birds. Well, you just said in their marsh, a marsh group yeah. they're doing so this weekend too, right? You go to the Friends of Scarborough yeah. Art, yep, and then the Scarborough Land yeah. Park, and early yeah. running yeah. programs for the team. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, all we've got a crew like coming guys. So we'll, we'll have something at nine o'clock at Higgins, the big yeah. pieces. I see you talking about that. Or what if there are other, like, um, or like Eco Maine? They can come in and do stuff. Yeah. So, but 
maintain the two Okay, so volunteer recruitment identification of community partners for programs, uh, great programming for the zero to six age group, um, identifying lack of space to host programs, um, and the professional development for staff and volunteers to enable uh, offering a wide, a more wide variety of programs. Be there. Yep. If you have a pavilion, it takes away the sun and the weather, it reduces the main time when there's snow, and it's a more you're not getting the melt. Yeah. You know, we lose the ice. Ten minutes. Pages, but it melts. I'm wondering yeah. too if there are like this is the age group we want to so, yeah. focusing on, but some of these programs, like the nature program, our family. Like they sound, go beyond an age. So maybe we that also becomes a marketing tool. I think that's a, a good point that instead of specifically saying we're targeting zero to six, if you have a one year old, they're going to come with their family. So I think we should say family programming, but expand the age group to include zero to six. Yeah. Well, but also zero to six, I agree with you. There are specific programs that zero, like a two to four year old yeah. is aimed at that a parent may bring the child. But they're not necessarily going to participate. Or maybe they do. Correct. Correct. So it's two separate things. Correct. They go together, but they are two separate things. Um, like right now, any of the new programming specifically says like you know five and above. Right. So it's not. It doesn't even. Okay. So then you get then it's your eight gets all times, which is for a period of time, and you don't you don't know. Like this year, we got like. Maybe we start with the zero to six so that it can exist and then expand into family programming because you got to get those families in to attend those programs first. And then once they know what's here and what's available, then they can be like, oh, now my kid's a little bit older. Now they can do those, those, uh, you know, three to two fifth grade programs or family movie night or whatever. What age does soccer start? Four? Depends on what town. The thing here is. Amount of time. Right. So four. Yeah. Yeah. Four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Four. 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 Yeah. A sufficient amount of openings for multiple kids to be able to participate. If you only have like one team or one coach, they give you what 12 kids, and then that's it for the entire town, right? So, what type of programming, um, like zero to six? What do you what do you envision? Any? Um, <laughs> um, I think timing that fits a zero to five year old schedule. I think that's most important because, like a lot of the other programs are like family oriented programs. They're they're like one to three. That's like right smack dab in the middle of nap time. So. We can't even attend any of those, you know, either. So I think a variety of programming at different times, like some like right in the morning, some maybe late afternoon, some in the evening. Um, but just anything for the kids to be able to expose themselves to, and it could literally just be open gym and and letting them pass around the ball. But it's specifically for that smaller age group. Yeah. Or if the plovers have something going on, it's walking on the beach, like getting them to identify what an egg looks like. You know, very very basic stuff. It could just all be introductory. You know stuff, but it's giving them a chance for all of the same age group to get to be able to do it together. Right. So that's probably a staffing workshop. <laughs> staffing is on a hall that conservation resources. Not necessarily because of all the programming that's created now could be we could offer that age group it's just not so of all the program that gets created now like the the formal dance that's this weekend or like the other stuff like you could include a zero to six yes. right now they're just so when that's created every year when it goes in each of the brochures why is there not a program that's for that age group? and it doesn't have to be a million it could just be one you know because you got to share the wealth between everybody else yeah, so it's just creating that so that it starts to exist because then we can recruit all of those new families who have all those new kids because I guarantee you most of the people that attended are going to be first time parents right and not people who have kids that are already in soccer and already doing everything right yeah. I'm just wondering if there is a program for a two to four year old is very different than a program for an age yeah. in terms of supervision etc so I'm just wondering like is there staff time available to run that program? 
or do we need more staff? I'm, I'm advocating for more staff. I'm not, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I think yeah, yeah. our staffing implications if you're going to expand your program. Well, it I think it depends on what they're hired for. Like, are they hired with the experience and the expectation that they're only going to be teaching, like, fifth grade kids thing, or are you hire staff with a more well-rounded drama that says, I work with all ages of kids. I would do I'm, that. I'm here as a as a before and after school care right. person, but All I can you know do anything. So then it doesn't matter. It's the right. person who designs the programs, designs them, and then staff get assigned accordingly. It doesn't matter what age group it is. I'm not asking yeah. for specifics, but like yeah, your example of yeah, doing something in the evening, right? right? The parents that are working, yeah, that's great. there may not be, yeah. if you've already got all your yeah. staff people full time, yeah. that's additional hours. So that's more of that. But that's where your community partners come in, right? So if you have a community partner that's maybe running that program instead of staff, and then you have one or two volunteers that act as that liaison for community services. I don't think you have a whole bunch of problems getting the parents of the two to slide because they they have to be brought around and they will watch what's going on. Yeah. And I think with one of those, you got to also be careful of the age groups. We can't put two to five with an eight, nine, ten years old. Right. Right. You know, there's just too much of an age difference. Yeah. We've always. Everybody needs to be concerned about that. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, for, you know, you can do it, you can just do an open gym, you know, where you just provide a bunch of like pom pom balls and the kids or pool noodles they didn't meet each other with. But you, you got to separate. You got to separate. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, now Portland has open gyms, but it starts at kindergarten or maybe you know and they have then they have basketballs i don't mind my kid getting beat up by a basketball but you know if they have a big enough gym to where if i said hey let's go over here there's no con there's no conflict right yeah so are we good on these yeah i think so two minutes you guys done yep okay gonna reconvene okay I <laughs> There's a lot of people walking. Yeah, definitely. I've never walked it, but there's a lot of Thanks for listening. There's a couple of All right. Like, you're like, do I get a hundred gallon of penny? Because we got, we got five of those in. I know, I've got to come see. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are on my list. All right. Um, Getting back together, we'll share. Some of the thoughts that we came up with the big elephant was the community <laughs> center. Um, part of the facility is to include a aquatic center, recreation and competition, fitness center, meeting rooms, daycare space, multi purpose courts. I'm sure there's a boatload we could add towards that, uh, but I think that gets the uh, you know, consensus there. Uh, we talked about an outdoor pavilion that could shelter a potential ice rink, um, ideally with refrigeration, um, which would help the ice last a lot longer. This could be a multi purpose pavilion during the summer. If the boards are kept up, it could be roller hockey, but it could be. Events like the one at basketball, yeah. like the one at Thompson's Point. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But if there's something over it, then it makes the ice a lot easier to maintain for Todd. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um. Well, talked about beach access um, as a facility, um, making residents more of a priority. Um, yes. Because of the crowding that's yes. happening. It's hard to get in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we talked about off-season beach access as well, primarily voice control of animals, um, mm -hmm. kind of being an issue. And then trails, outdoor sports fields and courts with a bigger 
facilities that we can Outdoor sports fields and sports. Of course. Yep. Uh, I agree. Good job. <laughs> you want me to go for last year? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we addressed programming. So we came up with um, with four uh, topics that we thought needed to be addressed. Uh, the first one was uh, the volunteer recruitment and the identification of community partners for programs. So uh, when there may not be enough staff, we can utilize the community and different partners and have them run the programming. So we don't have to necessarily spread the staff too thin. Um, create programming for the zero to six age group um, and any, doesn't matter, nature, aquatics, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, we also address the lack of space to host programs, like before and after school care is not held in a community center, it's held in a school, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yep. So um, addressing what that spacing issue looks like to host those different programs and utilizing those community partners to hold the programs in their spaces. Like the library story <laughs> hours are shortened because there's not a lot of space. Um, and creating professional development opportunities for staff and volunteers to help enable a wide variety of more programming. So if there's something really hot going on around town that everybody wants to know how to do, get the staff trained or send them to a conference or give them an opportunity to learn that um, so that they can bring it back here and we can do it here with our residents. And our first one was pools and community center. Yeah. It's kind of dovetails into the space. Yeah. So we didn't like list that per se right. as a program, but that sort of goes without saying, we support a pool and a community center. Great. Awesome. Not the hard part. What's that? Not the hard part. Well, and I did. Can we do it all? Yeah. Well, two things are just quick comments. Where one is when you guys were talking about program and they asked about facilities, is once you get into the programming space, then you kind of design your facilities to support those things once we know, so we can dive into those yeah. more um, and we'll then identifying what those challenges are. Um, around some of these issues here, when I've been breaking it up with my staff, and I said to these guys, just so everybody here is the same thing, I'm kind of breaking them up into three categories, existing facilities that need repair or a renovation because it's dangerous, you know, whether that's an ADA thing or a playground thing, I'm looking at them as a bucket that are existing facilities that I can make a modification to improve it, whether it's adding an amenity, a water fountain, better walkway, you know, something to improve the existing facility or change the use to meet a better need, you know, use it better. And then the third bucket I'm kind of looking at when I'm breaking this stuff out is new facilities. My priority is maximizing what we have. Yeah. And then uh, then coming back and saying, okay, to meet these goals, here's what we don't have. Or here's what we can't fit in. Um, so that's how I've been trying to break it out because um, so then we can start looking at long range planning and how that all fits functionally, timing, and financially, because that's that's really where we're we're talking about more of a 10-year timeline than a five-year window for some of the things that we've talked about. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of thought that's going to have to be. So this is helpful for me. So thank you. So go like it all comes down to budget, right? Um, and all of these have cost implications. Yep. So now do we like, for example, one of the questions. I had in terms of programming. If we add programming, expand programming, yes, we're going to rely on volunteers, but there are implications for your staff. Your staff is maxed out. Yes. Yeah. And again, it's, and I think so. The other thing on the programming side, and I don't, I didn't bring my sheet in, but when I'm looking at those programming goals, I was trying to get ahead of based on your last conversations. Um, I'm looking at program like, is it a program we need to expand because we just don't, whether it's space or popularity? Is it a program we need to redesign because it's not meeting the existing need, or is a program we're not doing? Yeah. And so those are three different kind of programming categories. Like when you say childcare, well, that's an expansion, right? That's an existing program. Is there a way to capitalize and expand on it? Um, is it a program that we're doing that its lifespan is over? And now I can take that 10 hours of staff time and put it towards something that's we're not doing. And so my hope is as we kind of figure out which programming genres. I mean, they've identified the, the, the zero to five, zero to six, teen programming, that active adult, that kind of 20 to 45 year old. Those were the three big programming categories they talked about in here. Yeah. And so we've started to fill some of those gaps, but we haven't put, we haven't redistributed resources yet. 
And so that's where, you know, I think our next step is before I can answer your question, Trish, to say, you know, is it a volunteer thing? Is it a, is it a group thing? Can I get an outside contractor to run it? Or is it an organization that will say, hey, um, you know, one of the parent teacher group is going to run a team night once a month to get that, you know, like those networks. Yeah. You know. I, I don't think cost is a really big factor for us right now. I think it's what we deem to recommend to the town council. Um, with Todd's input, the priorities that we put them in, then it becomes a factor more so to the town council. This is our recommendations. We might give some input to say, well, with, with Todd's, in, well, if you build a community center, that, that helps alleviate X, Y, and Z yeah. and recoups so much money or the fields themselves yeah. that allows us to rotate the fields, allows more playing time. Yeah, and I think, you know, also shoot, when, when they go through the ad hoc, Community center committee when that gets going, this type of feedback is going to be really important when they're looking at space design yeah. and what the because then it creates those priorities, right? I mean, because what what's happening in you know York may not be the same thing in Scarborough, like what people want. And so being able to put those priorities because then they're going to come back and that's where the feasibility part of it starts is what does it cost? Mm -hmm. Can we redo it? Can we repurpose or do we have to add it? Like what what does that mean? So um I think we did a good job on the list that we had. Well, I was with this right here and then these two lists. I mean, I think that it's, you know, I've been trying to think how I can serve you once I get this to be able to come back by the next meeting to say, okay, because that was last meeting I was feeling my heart was ripping out of my chest. Like, I know everybody's going to come with a bunch of wants and then I got to be the no man. And that's just no fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so part of it is, okay, having the time to come back and, meet with my staff and then return and say, okay, here's our challenges. Here's where we're struggling. What are your thoughts and ideas here? How can you help us brainstorm these solutions or what resources are out there? Here's where we can go. And, um, you know, for us, and this is not an excuse, it's just reality. This is probably our busiest time of the year. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. May is our busiest mm -hmm. month of the year between Ending childcare, opening summer camp, right. getting all the parks going, getting the beaches going. Yeah. Um, and then the three staff that usually end up living here are doing the job that everybody else helped with. So um, I need to be really cautious to not overpromise what we can deliver during this next time, which is also a challenge, what we're expected to deliver to council. So um, well, when we come away, I'm open for a clear direction. Can you give a staff breakdown real quick? Yep. So right now we have. Um, I'll go by division. So we have our operations um, manager who does all the building stuff, the, the rec track, front desk. Um, she does, she's also doing special events and um, she does the, our, our marketing right now as far as the sponsorship piece. Um, and then she, she really does everything that anybody needs. She kind of handles all that. Under her, we have um, uh, one person that does all the scheduling and then helps out with the, and coordinating the passports and then special events. And then we have one person um, that does all the marketing, Facebook, uh, posters, flyers, uh, and then she's at the desk, does passports and helps with special events. So that's that group. Um, we have one recreation, sole recreation person right now. Um, and we have um, in, in a generational, we have a manager and we have two um, programmers that do childcare, but then they do the team programming as well. And then we have one senior program coordinator that does all the senior programming and then fills in wherever she needs to, whether it's that she's been helping with childcare and doing love or aftercare care. Um, and then in the park side of things, we've got a manager and four full-time people right now. That's why you don't have any 06 program. You don't have enough programmers. Yeah, correct. That's one of, of, that's well, one of the staff. Yeah. And that's and that's and part of it is is that we've never had the space before. So they never pro so when I got here, most of our stuff was parks, child care, summer camps, and the programming is minimal. Like I, I thought about this and I haven't had a chance to do it yet. 
but I'd love to go see what how many programs we've built in the last three years since we've been here because there just wasn't space because you couldn't get into a building in a school building until four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but that so, doesn't mean you can't run a program. That's why you have to utilize other spaces. Yes. Yeah. If you could find other spaces, and they just weren't driven that way. Um, when I got here, there was no directive to do more programming. So the rec, the rec manager is the person who does all the youth programming. Yes. He's in charge. Yes. And the intergenerational is senior. Uh, no child. So it's kind of a crossover. Mm -hmm. They do all the child care, all the summer camp. Mm -hmm. The rec managers, all the youth sports, all the outdoor rec stuff right now, and then all the like for summer programs, it's all the week long individual camps. It's under him. And then he's also the beach manager. So when you do the like camp counselors and stuff for summer camp, who do they fall under? The rec manager? No, they fall under intergeneration. She, her child care staff becomes a summer camp staff. Yeah. Yeah, you need more people. The question that was posed, I'm sorry. sorry no, the question that was posed to me from Councillor uh, Anderson was if you guys feel that you'll be ready by June, because if you don't think you are, we can always push it back. So I just wanted to put that out there before we get. What uh, our recommendations are. That's right, what we're yeah. If you, like if you guys feel like you're going to need more yeah. time. No. Um, well, we have, I think we have this meeting. We need to divide and conquer what we feel are immediate. What's uh, where we say how, how we say it? We need to plan what's immediate, what needs to be planned, and what's kind of on the back burner. So Todd can give us input to say the Debbie Downer, you know, version. If if we do this, we can't do that. So we'll have that for next meeting that we can start verbalizing our recommendations for town council. I don't know that's what may. I don't know if it'll be ready for June. Well, Maybe. we have these two lists that we created and we'll be spending the rest of the meeting narrowing those down into one right. list. So what is the next step after that to turn that one list into recommendations? Right, so that's, make, that's what I'm saying. Once we have a directive for Todd, our immediate wants and whatnot. So, so that's what we are doing in the rest of the meeting today? Yes. Okay. Which we'll be giving to him. Yep. To work on for next meeting. Oh, okay, okay. Because this meeting is almost over. Yes. <laughs> and Todd's gonna say, "I can do this. I can't do that." With our list, is that the next step for Todd? Well, what what I was hoping is to be able to get your list and have time to go through it and work with staff to be able to say what are the challenges with that. Because here's because you know our budgets are already in, and so there's things that we can tackle, and then there's things that we're gonna have to plan for. Right. I.e three of the five, four things up there are planning things, right? You're not getting the community center tomorrow. You're not, you know, getting a pavilion tomorrow. So those type of things are, are things that if they're a priority, we can acknowledge them and we can work to make sure that to let them know during their, during the implementation piece that these are things that we're going to take on for the rest of the year to aid, to get ready. So just like, those comments are going to support what we're recommending. Mm -hmm. That's going to be part of the verbiage we'll end up using in our recommendations. Okay, so can we take yeah. this one, throw it up on here, add the things from this, and then talk about that? Absolutely. Yeah. And while that's happening, so what I what I can do and, and finish, and what I've started to do is I've taken, and I've, I've made my own Excel spreadsheet, so right. my staff can add to it, but I've taken all six goals and all the action items, I mean, all the uh, objectives that are in the book there for each one of those things, and I've started to put them into priority list for me that I think we can get going and, and you know and then put the you know the same kind of thing short term or ongoing um and then those tasks can be divvied out once we establish what they are where's the pavilion mentioned in this the pavilion in the ice ramp where is that in here uh we don't know it's okay it's yeah. not mentioned I don't know if it's mentioned specifically uh, I know the ice rink was talked about, but the ice rink, I, we, we I the, pulled the ice rink out of here and we're thinking how to make that feasible. And one of the things we talked about with Todd was, or actually, I think I it was, yeah, I think it was Alex's. I would have thought. never even thought of a ice rink here because I wouldn't even know where to put it. Yeah. Well, I mean, cool, but 
That would be awesome. Well, we were talking to Todd about how hard it is to maintain the current ice and expensive in terms of labor. You need volunteers and people with money like they have in Cape. Yeah. yeah. But it's all also it's also an outdoor facility. facility. It's, it's high. We which got a is, is mentioned in, in there. So you can right, I'm ready. Go. Up, you all right. Okay, so we want three what buckets here. Uh, looks like it. Yes. Uh, immediate, uh, immediate, immediate plan and then parking lot. So I got more paper too, Emma, if you need. I don't think someone. Other color markers? Uh, yeah, there's well, it was one. I like there's a red one. Do you want okay, yeah. a different? Okay, so here I, I, I mean, third. the community uh, center yeah. is the linchpin, right? To many of these. So yes. isn't that sort of an immediate because yes. the, that's the ad hoc? That's I, like I, an immediate? I, yes. yes. Yep. And it's that could have the pool, years. that could have the expanded programming. So that's what we want to. Well, that's it. That's the build it. Right. Peace. And they will come. Yeah. They're already here. <laughs> right. They're already here. Right. Yeah. They're exactly. Here and they're complaining. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this is, it's not listed there, but under the immediate is maintaining what we have. I think. Yeah. We're using better use of what we have, which would be beach access. <laughs> really? Although, all. Yeah. like you, some of the fields could be used differently. You're telling us about the school, the fields behind. So here, immediate. So maybe maintenance and repurposing. How would you say that? I think I think uh, yeah I think um, maintenance is immediate and repurposing would be planned. But you're already doing some of that, aren't you? Well, as far when I say plan, we're talking about the repurpose. Like for example, if we took away the full size field at Willie because we only play eight games on it and made it and soldered it all in, we could have two soccer or two lacrosse fields. That would be a planned renovation to meet. A okay, need, actually, that's going to take time. That's going to take time. Should we time. put? Approximate time. How about we get them all up on there first and then add time frames? Well, I'm just saying it's planned after this budget year. Like oh, immediate yeah. is this between now, this fiscal year that's starting July 1st. Oh. That's what I'm saying. How do we want to define the time period? I don't mean uh, to be. I, I, I look at immediate within the next three years. Okay. And to plan. be realistic. I think with, it depends on with, what is up here, though, because if we add something on here that says, like, create programming, it's not going to take three years to create new programming right, for this exactly. age group. So right, yeah. I think if we get them up here first and then yeah, define exactly. a timeline. Yeah. Okay, what else? So maintenance of facilities would include beach access. But uh, the resident priority and the changing of the fees is not going to happen for this so yeah. that's where I'm having a hard time deciding. If it I be think there's a, there are multiple different categories in this. So like maintaining okay. the beach access falls under that, but then maybe a plan would be creating a, a system to prioritize residents. So like okay. that's what you go under plan. So maybe we want to break each of these down into this, and then maybe circle like our top five. Planning can be immediate though, so it's kind of a twofold thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like the fees, we already talked about doing that mm -hmm. in the next year, so it's ready for you for budget. Yeah, yeah you want it to. That's where I'm struggling with the time. Well, yeah, I mean, immediate. I see zero to three years. It's, I mean, it's going to be hard to pinpoint this. This and Todd will, well, and his staff it, will it, it, revisit so that. So, if you're too. putting series three, what is this? What is this, Alex? What is? What, what do you put? If this is zero to three years, what do you put for this? Zero to five. Three to five, three to five. But here's the thing. I yeah. so I was struggling with the same thing, and I was looking yeah. at it and, and this kind of same thing. You are, but looking at programs is one conversation, and and facilities a second. That's but I think there needs to be multiple two of that. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. For example, like if you put programming and community center on immediate, those are two different two, two different things. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so let's maybe do one by one. So we talked about a community center, which would encompass all of these different things. Is there anything else from here that needs to go into each of these three categories? <coughs> yeah. 
No. No? Moving on. Okay. Pavilion. So I think of the pavilion as being kind of part of the community center. Am I thinking about that? I mean, we. I don't see it as part yeah, of you don't. Okay. I mean, it could right. be, but. Yeah. Okay. Could be right next to it. <laughs> right. I'd rather have the community Greatest center. Chance. I'd say be a, be a priority. No, I'd rather have the, excuse me, the pavilion be a planned more long-term. I guess yeah. I'm looking at it short-term, long-term, I'm super wish list yeah, yeah. when the town wins megabucks. <laughs> So here, pavilion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So beach access is under maintenance. Resident priority. Immediate. I think. I agree. Beach resident priority. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Beach access, off season beach access. Off season beach access and different, voice. Different than this? Yes. Yep. Do you think so? Yeah. Well, that says res. Oh, are you thinking? Uh, I think it's all the same. Yeah, I think you're, this you're is going to change like the that. rules. It's all going to should all be one of the policy. Right. I think, okay. Yeah, I think if you create something that prioritizes residents, it's going to be year round. Off, off season, correct? And when I when you guys say beach access, you're talking about like beach environment. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I was. We were talking about waiting in line to get to the beach because the parking lots are filled. Right. So that kind of you got beach environment because you had mentioned you know the dogs. dogs interact. Right. Right. Waiting in line. Right. Amenities, resident priority. So that's like. To me, in my mind, that's like beach environment, and then you're you're going to set those action items right. to benefit the residents. Right. Yeah, okay. All yeah. those problems. I yeah. can buy into that. I yeah. think it's anything that falls under. You leave your house to go to the beach. Everything that falls under that. Category. So beach environment instead of beach resident priority, and then the other ones would fall underneath. Uh, that's the way I, I I think I would categorize it. Yeah. Because and then that's you can immediate. set rules and policies and right. fees that you guys right. work on. Right. Your goal is to create the environment you yeah. want to go to. Right. Like volunteer hours, you get a free beach pass. Yeah. Right. That's there right. You go. Yep. There you go. All right. Incentive. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Animals. Beach environment. I say beach okay. environment. Okay. Great. Put on trails. We have three pretty big things over here right now. Good. We want to put it over here. I mean, as much as there, a those. lot of people said they wanted trail connectivity, I'm struggling with that it's one. It's another I one agree. of those middle. Well, I think it's between the two. Appropriate because we're just creating a subcommittee with transportation to look at trail connectivity. Okay. So I, I think the I can buy started. that. So yeah. trail, so you're supporting trail that. what? Yeah. Trail connectivity and what they said a good development and connectivity. Development and connectivity. Okay. And I think or expansion uh, even yeah. go to your yeah, thirty five percent whatever right. yeah, so expans yeah. expansion maintenance uh, and, and connectivity expansion uh, and yeah. then like Emily said you can prioritize inside the plan right and some of these may live on the line right, right. They that's may be, oh absolutely they may be going on but we, now we're in the planning parts to oh, that's right. a window of opportunity okay anything else for facilities nope moving on programs you well, nailed it. Me, nothing um, in the not important well, yeah it's right also it's, um, <laughs> it's uh, sports fields. Yeah. Court field? Ah. Outdoor, outdoor fields and courts was listed. We're already working on that. So doesn't that, isn't that what we just said? So it falls into plan? Could that arguably be under the maintenance of facilities and repurposing or no? No, no. It's no, very different. You're no, saying expanding. expanding. So, well, expanding, expanding and repurposing or redesigning spaces is going to be a planned effort. That's not going to happen. Okay. Anyway. It is, but these are really big and I want to be realistic. <laughs> like yeah. I know we have, we don't have enough fields and that's always going to be a problem until we build and for each type yeah. of sport. No, I see that as planned. I agree. I agree. But I think these are expansion. also really big things as well. Yeah. And feel it should be maybe moved over here. I would. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would put the field planning within the three to five realm, and yeah. then I would move the pavilion out. Well, to can't we have there. it twice? Can we say like, like field development and then field execution? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I think like field piece of it is expansion. Okay. Yeah, and land. field expansion and planned. I would go for that too. Yeah. So here. We're just yeah. Okay. 
You're going to have all those booster yeah. people that would complain. Yeah. If well, it's also right. a priority. Here. I mean, part of this too is yeah. what, right. what the offer, survey what the survey talks right. about is right. you know, overuse. And, and this is just going to be a recommendation. Right. A strong everybody's going to complain no matter what. Right. Everybody said that we wanted a community center. So everything else has to be pushed if we want a community center. Mm -hmm. Everybody says it's not. But the community center will solve some of the correct. other. Oh, yeah. Correct. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Yes. It's not going to give us outdoor fields. Yeah. But it's not, we, we know that that's still a problem. So right. it's just a matter of the time frame. If right. somebody wants to put up a buttload of money to address that quicker, right. I'm all ears. Yeah. Okay. I'm playing lottery. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's again. Okay, facilities good? Yeah, yep. facilities okay. good. Okay, programs. Volunteer Ooh. recruitment. I think volunteer recruitment and partner search is a top priority. What's partner search? Like connecting with Scarborough Land Trust, connecting with the Audubon, like really forging and bringing them in, like tapping them for their resources. Can we offer a zero to six program Getting if the started. Audubon agrees to work with us? So like we had talked about like lack of staffing for those programs, but if we have community partners hosted at their facility and they run the program and then you get a volunteer to be the liaison for community services, you don't need any staff. It's a big word, volunteer. I know that's. Don't be afraid I, of it. Not, oh I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> Ty hires me. I'm going to fix it. It'll be okay. I agree. I'm okay. Okay. I know. Series six programming. Nobody cares about that, but me. Okay, it's good. I care about it. <laughs> Are you going to have part two? That's yes. Okay. That's why I joined this board. Okay. Good. Can well, I, you talk more. Yeah. Can I, I make a recommendation? Yeah, you understand. Take it if you will or not. I think. Again, those in the master plan it is it was the zero six programming. It was teen programming. And it was that adult. I know I adult think, fitness. I think those target. I don't know if we how, how you guys call it, but target holes or target gaps. something gaps, whatever, because those are the ones that were identified and I people agree. talked about. So yeah. I, I just want to make sure we're not just doing what the board. I'm trying to make sure we validate what happens in here right. too. Right, right. So they specifically also stated like nature programs well, with just, another gap exactly. as well, Those which gaps. can fall under, yeah. you know, yeah. that too. So it's all the all the age groups. Yeah. Okay. Because we talked about the difference between zero to six and family programming Absolutely. too. So, yeah. so let me ask you, and <laughs> that, those are three gaps. Yep. And it's going to require staffing. And it's going to require money. Or it's going to require, like Emily said, partnerships. Like in the team stuff, we've already partnered with a land trust. We've already partnered with team with trails. So literally, I've got one staff that drives a bus, and they've got two staff leading the program that are expertise in that. So we're already starting to do those, some of those things uh, in certain areas when we found them. So yeah, so I think that, yeah. Emily, Can that be immediate? Yeah, it's going on. Yeah, and I think that's how we're trying to meet the staff shortfall is finding the partners yeah. mm -hmm. okay. to do that. Program, yeah. programming gaps for those identified yeah. yeah and then like emily said but it's the zero to six it's that 13 to 15 right and then it's like that those are the, do you develop your programming a year at a time or do you do it by semester or by season well we do four yeah there's the four seasons so when we try to fill ahead so if we have standard programs and then when we add them in so some so summer is coming up now yeah. when was your summer programming decided in uh, january yeah, because it came, we put it together in February. So it's usually, we're usually like six Season months before, ahead, yeah, yes. at least, okay. yep. at least. Okay. And so if you came to me and said, hey, we want to talk about, um, you know, a, a, a kayaking program, we would probably say, we've already missed that window to advertise for it. Yeah, well, I agree, I mean, kayaking fits in. program. Yeah. We need uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to your point. Our beaches, um, other programs. I guess. Use for okay. I, I guess I hear want to hear what you what Todd said. I guess now I know zero to six programming is one of the gaps. Mm -hmm. Is that our immediate for based on the surveys, and then we put the others in planned, or are we more expensive? We can, I think we can put the others. In, well, they specifically addressed it by aquatic and water, outdoor and nature, and adult sports, fitness, and wellness. <laughs> they didn't. I didn't see if they identified it by. Age. They uh female pages, but yeah, it was those three genres, and then they and then they did age. Right. They specifically talked about I, the three we just talked about. So I guess are we are do we need to go down, drill down, and not 
far to say which age groups, or is it too, can it be an immediate to begin to I, I fill think, in the gaps for you the could age if you groups? Want to, you know, it depends how far you want to go. I mean, maybe a simple statement I is mean, fill yeah. the gaps every by single, the appropriate every, age and the appropriate age group. Every single one of these is a gap. If you say senior programming, that's right. a gap. If you say zero to six, right. if you say nature, every single one of those is a niche. So I think by picking one and putting it here and then maybe putting uh, uh, one or two more in plans that can help look ahead to the future. But I think this one sh should be immediate. And then what was the other one? Nature's? Nature, Age of education 61. Okay. Nature and aquatic. I think aquatic is a given once they get our community center yeah. with the pool. <laughs> yeah. So maybe under plan, we could put nature and aquatic programming for youth, or not, not youth. It's for us all. other programming. Right, um, all? Only youth? Youth and adult? I mean, my goal is to plan it as to deal with it more than three years away. You know, all those, those I know. gaps. I mean, that's. So maybe aquatic program is a planned. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any aquatic programming. Yeah. But I've also tasked my staff to start reaching out to see what's around and can we rent. So I'll pull the pool to have a scrap of iron. Just like different things that we can do. That I'd love to see what those numbers look like. Yeah, yeah. that would be a fun issue. Yes. Again, we'd have complaints because they were pulled. Yeah. yeah. And not right. Okay. That's the, okay so is there, another, is there another one that we want to put in here? If you're going to specify zero to six age programming, I would argue that we need to address some of the other gap programmings because we are representing the community, not just this board. Yep, exactly. So which which one? I can say counselors. There's set four of us who have thirteen year olds, and I and I have a thirteen year old, and we we've done our best to. Yeah. I think you know, services is going to invest to try to put programs together. That's they're also not that team 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 adult. Team. They're not that enrolled, mm -hmm. or are they? 40%, they're, they're six, six to 12. Yeah. That's, and seniors makes up 21%. Those are the two. Um, what page are you on, Emily? Uh, it's 56. I thought it said, though, that was that age group between 18 and 54 that there was a gap in something. Like that was a gap. Yeah, they, 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 they were, it's a small percentage, they're only 5%. Yeah, they, they explain that in any community, they, Youth is the highest percentage of participants. Yeah, seventy-four percent. And the most pregnant. Yeah, you know, and so it's it's not always it doesn't always correspond that there's less adults participating to so there's less programming. It's never going to be as much as youth. Yeah, it just doesn't yeah. work that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. On page fifty-seven, it has an example of thirty percent of the population is youth, but that's usually 73 percent of the programming is built for them. Um, Was programming trends? Yeah, so on page 67, that's their, you know, after their recommendations in that second. You know, and then they, they have them in, in programming and fitness and administration in the DEI. And then they keep them calling it so expanding staffing levels. We talked about that. Yeah. <clears throat> Fill in programming gaps for adult fitness and wellness programs. Florida and East Texas Dream Sports Homeschool under language review training programs for affordability. So I think there are a lot of specific gaps. It's just a matter of us picking another one that's not that one. It could be. Aquatic, it could be uh, eight, uh, adaptive programs, it could be kids with special needs, it could be senior nature programs. Like well, aquatic these. comes up a lot. It does, which we cannot do until we have an aquatic facility unless right. we take the extra step to go to South Portland or go to another town over and convince them to give us their pool time. Which, why would they? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I personally like nature programming. Yeah, yeah. Because you can accomplish that with your park ranger potentially yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of sort of ties stuff. into trails. That's not exactly trails. So yeah, it's just, since yeah, it's we've gone good. through and we've spent the zero to three years maintaining our facilities, we're not going to mm -hmm. utilize them through uh, programming or using the programming to help upkeep those facilities. So by using maybe like a friends of Black Point program that has families and kids in it that go to help with trash pickup or something, which helps to maintain the facility. 
So nature programming across the board, youth and adults? Yeah. Mm -hmm. ones? Okay. Yep. Do something about scarlet marsh. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Learn to canoe. The thing too is we have there's we have, we're going to start meeting. We have a lot of programming that goes on in town that is already happening. It's just how do we pull all the? I mean, there's SLT, Scarborough Marsh, Friends of. They're doing a lot of stuff, and so it's either we partner or we support because right. the, 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 there's so. I mean, the Karen's point about the teenagers. They're so busy. There's so many choices for them <laughs> if they want it, if they want it. And that's all, that's the teenage conundrum, right? Actually, that's a great volunteer project is for someone to create a database that you could easily it's market. <laughs> and so you can list all of these, yeah. all the programs almost by age or yeah. by type. Well, we have, I think that's so in the back of this, and I, uh, it's in the appendix, I can also find it, but that's what they did. They took every program we did, and, and that's how they got this data. So I can find that. Program. But beyond us, like you oh, were just yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. Scarborough Marsh, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah, all, oh, you mean all the all right that down. And everything. That, that compared to recruitment. So when you have a person that creates this database, that includes all of the programs, all of the facilities. So if someone comes and says, I want to volunteer, we say, what do you want to do? Here's the list of all the programs going on. Oh, you want to work with kids? Okay, here's all the beaches that need help. Oh, you don't want to do that? Here's all the trails that need cleaning up. And and yeah, they can work But together. that would be a great like community service by creating a master database. Well, I've got a five-year-old. Maybe community services doesn't have a program, but Scarborough Marsh does. Yeah. And so to have that data that you can easily access, we could put our, we could brand it and it's such a great marketing tool for the community. All town groups. Yeah, we're getting off topic. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, we have two left the space to host programming and professional development. Where are they going? Okay. Yeah, so that's so based, I agree. Space to host programs would be community yeah. centers. So I think that one is maybe addressed. And then yeah. professional development. Yeah. All three. Yeah, because, I think that's an ongoing. Yeah, yeah I do too. Ongoing. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have these all up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, the one that's not out there and nobody talked about, and and I think it's important because you guys talked about it as a goal is the community outreach. You know, getting giving feedback and getting feedback that in and out communication. Like, you know, your whole. It, I mean, it's part of your volunteer group, but it's also going out and hearing the community. We talked a little about visiting the boroughs and how do we go and oh, yeah. listen to what that neighborhood is doing. I think that'll it, help with a lot of these issues. I think that goes under under this We're one. I, I think it's just general community okay. people. Yeah. Gotcha. Community engagement or outreach. Yeah, maybe volunteer. Maybe it's communication and engagement, volunteer engagement. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm just wordsmithing, but. But I think the meat, you know, once you get to that point, it's you know, it's that in and out. How do you get a lot in, but not a lot back? Okay. And we did not we put the goals down, but we did not talk about staffing. Are we not ready to do that? Or I mean, I guess I, I guess I know we, it's not a budget thing, but are we advocating to town councils to get some of these done that we need more bodies, that we need more resources? Well, I think once we narrow these down and we provide that to Todd and he can tell us, yes, I can do this, but this is what I need, then that's when we give to town council to say, this is what we're recommending Recommending, if these things are met. Is that correct? Yeah, I can break it out. So, so if we say to him, like, we want to create, um, uh, you know, we want to maintain the facilities and he's going to say, you know, that I need, you know, three full-time maintenance people and you know two part-time people and this is the timeline of the facilities that I can create it in. Yeah. So for in this budget, like I said last time, based on past meetings and past stuff and the, and recommendations here, we're putting forward the two parts maintenance right. workers as mm -hmm. well as the part-time ranger to meet some of these demands that were inadequate right now serving, yeah. but then also trying to manage what potentially could come. So yeah, we can yeah. we can do that across the board where I can come back to you and we can have the next discussion <laughs> around this is what it's going to take to do. And then really, then the decision from you guys to go to council is going to be at what level? 
because that's that, that's deeper than tonight. But, yeah. You know, that gets into the weeds a little bit, you know, what that service level is. So we've ident identified seven for the immediate. Is, are these going to be our recommendations then, these first seven? I think depending on Todd's staff feedback mm -hmm. um, to say, okay, you know, this X is maybe not realistic if we have the top six. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then we adjust accordingly. I mean, just for, for just for conversational purpose, you guys, we've already taken steps. We've got the ad hoc committee going and we've got the feasibility study money from last year that the consultant RPs out. So those two things are moving as fast as they possibly can yeah. at this point, right? Then that's all going to be in the ad hoc and the consultant's time. This right here is, um, you know, we're doing better because we're fully staffed. Um, but the recommendation of two more people is going to help this immensely that's another you know 80 hours a week this right here is something you guys if it stays on a goal for you you've already committed to work on that over the summer right review fees kind of rules yeah. price and policy dictate how the environment is so you've already kind of committed to that this is a this is would be a new undertaking as far as a big lift you know what i mean um this is something we can talk about and then figure out what resources to go along with the other programming um, some of this stuff is going, but we can figure out what, where, and which gaps it fills. And then this one is something that we just have to, I've increased this budget, um, I think by two grand this year in my staff budget, um, to be able to get people back out because we haven't in years. Between how many people? Between 16 people. That's a lot. Not yeah. a lot of money. Not well, no, money. the total budget is like 12 grand, but it's like, I've added another two to the line. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So for next, so if this is what we're going to give you then for next meeting, you provided five minute one paragraph summary per each topic and then we go from there do we have to narrow it down i i guess my question still and this is to karen is what is, is this council have an expectation of yeah. how this is supposed to come back to you and in what format and that's a great question i think when i'm watching this play out tonight my interpretation is kind of how you guys are playing it out if we think that these are the priorities and todd is going to now say this is what they think it's priority and this is what i need to implement these priorities um i'm definitely going to circle back around with don anderson and see kind of specifically what he's looking for but that's that's how i look at it is i mean we community center is a priority so this is what we need is 20 million dollars that's it so you we give we just gave you these points. Yep. You give us the information for yep. next meeting. We evaluate if what you've given back to us is attainable. Right. And then we give those recommendations to you or we, we the council or whatever. We, we wordsmith the presentation. Yep. And then they say, okay, great, we like that. And then we make a plan of how to yeah. carry those out. Yep. All right. And I'm gonna finish these for you by next meeting so then you can have a look and see. These are just the sheets that came out, the goals with all the objectives. So it's more of a deeper dive through it because these things are more like, so for example, for um, number one on the goal one, continue to improve organizational fit, uh, efficiency. Objective 1.1 is continue to enhance and improve internal and external communications regarding the target activities. And so in the master plan, there were some action items that they talked about. And so I was starting to go through, okay, things we can do right now within budget is inventory park signage for appearance and intended message. The IE should we be saying voice control versus off leash? You know those type of things where we can make positive changes without a lot of money. Um, match marketing resources and type to targeted demographic to make sure I can target my staff to go back and self inventory themselves. You know how are we getting to that group? Target partnerships and increase improvement service program facility service. And then on the side, it's a short term or ongoing. And so I've start I've, I've had at least one, if not some action items that we can do like yesterday, and I'll get these done to you with those write-ups on the challenges of those things. And I'll try to I'll try to get it done in the next two weeks. So then you have time to read it and process before we come here. Yeah. That'll be my goal to get it to you. Um, um, because then you guys can read and have a thoughtful discussion when you come back to say, you know, this doesn't fit or I don't see this anywhere or tell me more about this or, you know how do we how do we support or that doesn't even make sense to all we're gonna cross that off it's like whichever direction it goes um karen town council meets the first and third wednesday yes of the month mm -hmm. 
maybe the 21st, you might have something ready to present. Okay. I mean, they're keeping us really busy, so I don't think they're gonna the next meeting. No, I, well, we're not gonna meet until, well, we're meeting next month, but then we're not meeting until July 20th. Gotcha. Okay. And I don't wanna meet before that. But is it the, the July and August, you're only meeting on the first one meeting a month? One meeting. I don't know what week that is. Oh, I don't know. Oh, the summer schedule. schedule. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, July. Yeah. yeah. So July and August. So, June, yeah, the third Wednesday in June. Hopefully, we'll have something. Mm -hmm. Next meeting, we'll know. <laughs> have a good understanding. All right. Great discussion. Uh, before we move on, um, Todd asked for a few minutes about um, trash cans. Trash, and it's not on the agenda, so I don't know if you need to take a vote to officially add it to the agenda. Um, but, so last week we discussed carry in, carry out of Higgins. We took that vote. Um, since then, I've had numerous sit downs with residents from Higgins Beach, uh, probably 20 to 30 emails of just concerns. Um, some voicing that uh, didn't know, wasn't heard, uh, challenges that they that they see. Uh, I've had some great conversations um, and uh, it's a, it's, it, you know, it's a complex place um, and, and there's a challenge because you've got really three groups. You've got visitors, you've got residents that live there year round and then you have residents that visit or rent out their place. And so you've got three dichotomies there, of folks that come down there and so, um, after hearing what they're what they've talked about, um, I'm still in favor of carrying carry out, but I would like to make a new recommendation for you to consider. And I've had a conversation with Karen and the town manager um, to look at shortening the amount of barrels that we have down there for this summer and putting them in um, just it, like in the Bayview spots. Yeah, you know the, the two roads that come, you know the 13 Bayview spots, only putting them in that genre. My professional feeling is we don't have an issue with a lot of the other barrels because our attendants and the staff can see them when they're in the outskirts, they get mishandled and the misbehavior happens more. And so, um, and then I would propose setting up a meeting to go to Higgins Beach this summer and have a conversation of this is the needle we're trying to move. Um, and here's the reasons why we're going this way. Um, it, it's just, we've got, we've got so much going on right now um, I don't want to lose sight of the whole mission with everything else going on. No. So that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. I mean, we got some emails from as, as well. And I appreciate you bringing the pictures tonight. Personally, the emails that we received for town council give me the impression that it, what, what you're doing isn't working. Yeah. So I thought what you proposed was a different idea to try to deal with it. I look at those pictures and I say, the trash cans aren't working. People are throwing trash no matter what. We've created a place for people to throw it. Um, you know, there. I think there's definitely some miscommunication between the Higgins Beach Association and they're split about it. I think we voted on this. I think they have a problem. I don't know if there's a better solution. I think we're not solving. I personally don't know much about this. What about a dumpster? I, I worry that this doesn't. We're just continuing the problem. That would be a bigger. The fact that, that bikers, oh no. bikers bring food. I, that would I mean, be... they have room for their food, so they should have room to bring their trash. But right. I'm, there's some, certain right. things I'm having. I'm struggling. Yeah, absolutely. It's just people aren't decent. Yeah. If they're not going to be decent, trash can or not. Right. I mean, you think about your staff, and I, I don't know what's worse. Yeah, I mean that's it, disgusting. And a lot of the challenge for us, and I'll, I'll just re kind of refresh what we did last summer. We moved it one from one emptying a day, it usually happened before nine in the morning, to two. They were trying to get there around three. Most of those pictures are at sunset, so between that three yeah. o'clock emptying yeah. and dark, a lot of this happened. No, that's sunrise. So we yeah, so don't get any sunset over there. Oh, well, one, oh, okay. sunrise. But either way, it's happened after yeah. they were last emptied yeah. at three o'clock. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? People empty their whole. Right. And I that, that shows that uh, that's the summer one here that right. shows that right. people are doing that. We've uh, talked to a lot of people yeah. that we catch, but this thing here is the winter one and it's full. But the disgusting thing is the dog poop bag on the bottom. And no place to put. Can we just put up a sign that says you're under surveillance? 
Mm-hmm. Well, I think part of it is, is, is that, that true? That's you know, I don't know. Just that might intimidate. You're, you're under surveillance by the residents sitting in their window watching you throw it. Part, of, it, part of it is education and part of it is messaging. For the people that I've talked to that still didn't agree with me in my, 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 my option, um, they could respect the conversational points. And I think it's going to take more people to understand why, because they just see it being taken away. And whether you're a dog person or a walker, or I get, you know, Uber Eats every Saturday night and I'm going to, ha- you know, go down there and it's getting delivered to, you know, to Pearl Street, whatever it is, I think that people need to understand that, you know, that they're going to be removed if the solution to Karen's point, and again, if, if, if something doesn't change, if something doesn't move the needle, then, then, and then there's possible they can be moved during the season. Um, so if you remove everything altogether, is there not a fear that the trash is just going to be left there without the can? Well, so that, and that so that that is the fear. Yeah, I guess the, I'm confused. Can, so can so we, you're going to take away and the people else? want them to stay? Is that the, yes? We were going to we were going to take right, them all away right. and just leave barrels in the parking lot. I've got two things, and one that's very important, yeah. and it, it should stay in in this room for now. You're on Zoom. Yeah, you're oh, being recorded. Maybe I'm on Zoom. <laughs> is the rat problem? Oh. Yeah. And there are some rats around, and it's it's scary. Uh, where they go in the wintertime, the guys that leave, I think they go and have it there. But that that's a problem in seeing. Uh, and and this is when he said carry in, carry out. We had a group of people who we were talking about it, and we would be supportive. Yeah. Uh, and I know the president very well. Yeah. Yeah. But she's planning on having you come at our organizational June. meeting sometimes in June, which would be a uh, members only type of thing. And then you have a true feeling yeah. of, of the dog problems. Roger, do you guys have solutions? Do you have like a better idea? Well, we, yes. Than... Uh, last year, there were no yeah. trash barrels at three of the streets, which was Morning, Champion, Vesper had no barrels, nothing happened there. Uh, it was clean all the time because it, mostly the residents and the renters go onto that street, onto the beach, and they were taking in and taking it out. The, the locals understand like a lot of them. Doesn't a lot of this, this is beach environment resident priority also what we're talking about. If there's more residents and less non-residents, are the residents the ones that are gonna be taking care of the beach better than I don't no, know. I, it's a I question. Think, I think, I mean, you go to any uh, a state federal park, it's carry in, carry out. And, you know, yeah. and everybody obeys it. There's a fine if they catch you. Uh, we don't need to go that far. But we, we, we need to start a program. And I think it would be a good idea to have a couple of barrels on Pearl and Ashton, where sure. most of the traffic goes through to, to give it to them. Uh, and you so, guys are okay with community services not being able to empty them in a timely manner and them overflowing because my understanding is if the removal was to try to prevent that so we're going to put them back but well, we're going to not only, guarantee if that it's only on two there. streets that you do that then yeah it's, it's going to accumulate but if you have like uh, we were also suggested uh, on on uh, uh was it kent street to put a sign there, carry in, carry out. And, and, and that is uh, important to do that for people to take the stuff out and take it home uh, because it's environmentally protected area with the birds. Seriously, the, the Tobas and the uh, Leash Turn. They're, Leash Turns right now are the only place in the state of Maine that uh, are on site. Instead of that, they have one island, but they come to our place. What is that? Leash the Turns, turns. the bird. It's oh, okay. a companion yeah, to the it's, a, it's, it's, it's great uh, area. Are you asking? Anyway, we're willing to work. Yeah, yeah. And, and we try can back on this. Or? So I am asking that I'm making a recommendation that we that I'd like to consider pulling that recommendation and proposing this new one to be able to get the education and have the time to work through the whole process. So the entire Higgins Beach area feels like that they're part of the solution. Because um, talking to a lot of the folks. Most of the people that I've heard from are the biggest volunteers down there. And that's what kind of what changed my mind. People that are helping pick up the beach, take care of it. Um, you know, part of the educational process, it's also, it's, it's not a threat, but it's an educational purpose. Like if the people that are living there and renting there don't take their stuff back to their homes, then there's not going to be enough capacity in these barrels. That's just fact. 
Yeah. And so if we're worried about a visitor, uh, whether they're being dropped off using the barrel or a dog walker using the barrel, if we minimize who's how they're using it, that's the only way keeping barrels is ever going to work. Yeah, it's very common when you rent a house too to have instructions. I think it's yeah. very easy for every renter down there to have yeah. an instruction that's very clear about yeah. bring in, bring out. And, and I'm talking to Scott Townsend for that's a long time, exactly. they've got majority of the rentals. Yeah, they do. He, he's that's willing to work with us in the education. I didn't know this, but trash pickup is on Fridays. Their rental, they pay for private uh, trash on Saturdays to help with the cost. So there's a lot, of, there's a lot more advocacy that I knew about. Um, but I think I need to be able to have time to lay this all on the table and say, we're all going to work together to give this one last shot. I think this is a good stepping stone. And I do too. Compromise. I, I, yeah. I think that we can come into an agreement with both sides. Yeah. Uh, to try something and everybody work on it. I mean. It, I, uh, the side that's complaining now is uh, the same that we had with dogs before. And they have uh, most of them, I think, the dog folks, some I don't to, you know, some locals don't want that. They say that's not what should happen. It should have trash cans. But I think once you get used to it, if you bring in and bring it out. The other ones that I think would work very nicely with us too is the Higgins Beach Inn and the Higgins Beach Market who now have phone call service for lunch. And so they bring a pizza box in and on that pizza box should be carry in, carry out. So- And uh, maybe we should be talking to those business people about that stuff. I think, yeah, I personally yeah. think this is a little bit of kicking the can and the problem. You have an ongoing problem down here, Todd proposed a solution. And instead of trying to try that solution for a month, a week, a day, I think there's a lot of fear about it getting worse. And I, I don't know what the, what the flip is, does this work? I, I, I mean, it's still, we don't know. So is so it worth a try instead of that, I think? Is, so what do you want to do, hoping. remove barrels? To, so yeah, we usually so that, more barrels down the beach. And I, I would, again, proposing to remove them all, but what I'm proposing now is just put like baby where we have a, a reserve officer or VIP, those are the two main public entrances to the beach. Unless you're coming from a home or visiting somebody, People that park in the parking lot or ride their bike are going down those two axes. So put the two of them there and then remove everything else. And then are you adding in signage to let people know it's going to be? Well, the whole, I would propose doing the whole educational campaign that we talked about with carry and carry out. Yeah. Would be to do this, you know, again, talking to the market, talking to the Higgins Beach Inn, putting it on our season pass flyer, uh, doing the Higgins Beach Maybe Association. Maybe Higgins Beach Inn wants to do trash cans. I don't know. Yeah, and, and there's a potential, I think we could look for potential partners if they have staff on board to be able to, hey, if we get a phone call in, in lieu of some, you know what I mean? Um, so, you're really not going to know unless you do it for like an entire summer. Well, and, and that's, and that my, my fear right now is that is everybody on board enough to support it, to give it the true test? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure either way right now. Yeah, I'm kind of well, you don't know that. unless you try. So right. you can try it once and then reevaluate yeah. it. Yeah. So that would be my proposal from what I've heard is to pull the full carrying care out of his beach, minimize the barrels to just between the baby slots and continue with the whole educational campaign, commit to meeting with Higgins Beach to say, this is the direction we're going in. This is, we're gonna to try to move this needle here. Um, and then as well as if this continues to happen, we might as well have it all over the ground. We'll probably have less. You know, if, if the barrels weren't there, so um, or or take issues with the, the dog. And and one thing that I've heard is this is an attempt to get rid of the dog to take its speech, and it is well, it isn't at all. I, I think I think they need everybody needs to be educated. Myself and everybody else. You go to the beach, you have a lunch, whatever. Bring it back. That and I have a wagon. I bring it over there for the kids and I bring it back. And a lot of people do that already. Now, we need to probably work with the outsiders coming in for the day and do the, do the same thing, carry in, carry out. Everybody does it. The when we day. create our volunteer community base, we can have people who want to volunteer and be there during the day. That could be our uh, and, trash police is not the word that I want to use, but you know, edu education. Yeah. You know, and part of that too is education on our staff. You know, some of the things in here is, you know, um, them reaching out to us before the end of the day if something changes. We'll, you know, we'll send somebody down there. You know, yeah. what I mean, it's, 
Well, the, the Ranger program would help. Well, and that's the other thing I didn't, you know, the funding is still in the budget for when it goes to the process as far as the Ranger, but I've been honest with everybody. Um, I can't guarantee the Ranger program is going to get off this summer. You know, it's going to be June by the time we get approval. And so it's really going to be about building. Again, I'm excited about the work you're committed to doing with beach fees and policy, and then having the Rangers to be able to train and educate and support that. But that's not going to all happen mid season. It's so, just, your proposal is a compromise. And then next year, as we start working out the other beach things, we include cash and carry and more education. So, that could fall in. So, you're I'm proposing not, a compromise. I'm right proposing now. a compromise to yeah. be able to put a yeah. more viable timeline together. Um, and then, really, again, this discussion should be happening in the fall, not right before beach season. Right. Are you going to establish a specific pickup time with that association and say, this is it, we pick it up at this time and that time. If it's overflowing, we just cannot Yeah, and we can it. educate that. We yeah. have our, with our contractor, we have a meeting, I think on the 26th, was that Wednesday, to establish like we have a before eight o'clock and then before four o'clock. I think that'd be helpful for like the yeah. 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 And to really understand. Yeah. yeah. No, so they have a, uh, we have a dumpster at Ferry. So Hagen's Beach barrels were emptied into his dump truck. And then he takes, goes and does the ferry barrels and throws in the ferry dumpster. We can't get a dumpster at Higgins because it's the lot's too small and they'll wake up the neighbors when they shake it. And then there's no space down the line. So that that uh, dumpster is shared between ferry and then so we have one at my point. hand empty it into this. Yes. We have a contract that does that. Pulls the bag, reloads the bag, puts it in his truck. So you're looking off. for a vote of support and that recommendation? Support critique concern like what I, I my goal is to be able to move forward one way or another i'd like to get to the town manager have a discussion he's on board with a compromise per our discussion today i said but i brought it to this committee and i've always said this i'm not in favor of asking for something and then getting a support and then walking it back but you know based on the conversations i've had since then i think it's a it's a viable strategic solution to get the open results down the road. I'll make the motion that we support this compromise as Todd presented. Second. Thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? It can always change. This yeah. has been mentioned. So all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Gonna you. Try. You're going to try something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're I appreciate it. Thank you. Work. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll work through with staff and I'll report back in June. All right, uh, item seven, we've got the dates set. Um, as Todd gets that, his staff, he's got some homework to then present to us at our next meeting. I, I see most of, if not all, the meeting formulating our presentation. Are there not be here? Is there anything else? That is going to be included in the agenda for that next meeting, or is it us just talking through everything that Todd's presenting and then us making a decision? As of right now, the only other thing that potentially could pop up and I can share with board leadership here is that um, we may have more updates on the ad hoc committee or that RFP well, we process. Do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, actually, if you guys are interested, I'm hoping an application will be coming online in the next, I, I don't know, I've talked to Tom. I would hope the next four weeks because. Good. In June, we're going to be having, we're going to be reviewing, ideally. Yeah, we should be having our RFP for a consultant is due at the end of the month. Then I got to work with Tom. We'll put a review team together and I'll try to get some people from this board to review consulting firms that apply. And then to have somebody on board prior to the start of Karen's work with the ad hoc committee. So then that's a, you know, that educational product can lift off the ground at the same time. So. With that being said, are you selecting from this board or are you asking for volunteers? We are going to have everyone apply. So then you guys will apply like you're normal. And then I'll be like, oh, this is community services. This is community services. And you'll spots. be in a different group. Okay. But we're having everyone fill out like the same sort of application. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. How do we ensure that there's enough people from this board? You're guaranteed I'll let you know. No, no, I mean, like, oh. what if nobody volunteers? Oh, oh you'll hear from me. Okay. <laughs> and I think that I hope that's not the problem. Uh, is anybody interested? I am, and I'll do it, but I'm pretty busy during the summer. It's not going to start this summer. Okay. It's not. It's I'm pretty I mean, busy during I, the fall, too. I think <laughs> maybe we'll have a kickoff meeting to determine who's chair and what our schedule is going to look like if we get to that. Sure. Okay. Um, 
the, the and and Karen and I haven't had a chance no, to chat we haven't talked about it. One one thing that once we get the reports back from the consultants, part of that package will say to deliver what we're asking for, it takes three months, six months, eight uh -huh. months. And so then we'll match up that's like better. when we can start. But if if if, if and I'm just making this up, if if council says we want to start in September and it's eight months, then we then I'm gonna say, well, you're not gonna get it back till after the budget season. So once we get that in a couple of weeks, then council can decide, okay, what fits into what schedule to match up the consultant order, because that's the majority of the, of the work. That would be helpful for quantifying for volunteer too, like what's the commitment you're making? Is it three months, no, six months, 10 months? That's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, that's to build that building and which it's three years. No, but I mean the committee. No, the, commi oh, the committee. Yeah, oh, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, we're going to get this work done, and it's an intense six months, yeah. and then it's right. So then you know what this next six months looks like. So that's the only thing I can see to the agenda. If, you know. <laughs> um, all right, great. Um, we'll jump down to item twelve. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Unless anyone has anything. Thank you all. This was a. Very yeah. good night. Very good night. Thanks, Thank Appreciate you. it. Does everyone know how to use the Google Drive? Yeah, you now. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Everybody, everybody did before. I don't know. I know how to use the Google Drive. Use the Google Drive. Emily sent everybody oh, an email with a link. Oh, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> the easiest way is the link and please save it as a favorite and just click on the favorite. Yeah. If anybody needs use help, it. let me know. Can but... you resend the link again? Yes. So I just, I mean, I know how to use it. I just don't know that I ever. I, I think it. sending the agenda to is just. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that anyway. But yeah. the easiest thing is to literally just bookmark the entire drive. Right. And then all, everything is in there. So like right now.